I think this is a very interesting topic. What we are talking about, if we are looking at the past 24 months, the two cities' rate cycle is completely in a different stage. I think if you look at the past 24 months, Singapore are enjoying the structural tailwinds with a huge, a huge demand coming to the market and limited supply. So both residential and commercial real estate rent and the capital value has increased quite substantially. Hong Kong is on the past you know, two to three years, COVID lockdown, social unrest. Demand has been so sluggish with ample supplies coming to the market going forward. So Singapore, Hong Kong is actually in the bottling out stages. So we are in a very, very different uh, dynamics. Singapore for future growth momentum is more likely to be a lot more muted. However, we do believe Hong Kong is is interesting point to bottom out. So Henry, it sounds like you're saying they're at almost opposite ends of the cycle of Hong Kong is bottoming. Singapore, you could argue, uh, is peaking or may have just uh, uh, peaked with uh, uh, these uh, new property tightening measures announced just a couple of days ago. Yeah, I do agree with you. Is it to be honest with you, additional by the stamp duty does come as a surprise to all of us for the residential point of view, because we don't think it's super necessary. Because if you look at the transaction volume for residential over the you know past 12 months, only 5% are the foreign buyers. But when we are looking at the impact of the different residential segments in Singapore, probably luxury condos in the prime locations are the huge impact. For mass markets, the decentralized locations, I think the price is going to remain resilient. However, from the investor point of view, I think investor is going to shine away from the residential market. They are going to pay attention for the commercial real estate spaces because the commercial real estate is not subject to the stamp duty. So we are very positive for the offices, for retail, particularly for shop houses, and even for the hotels, it's giving them more upside going forward. Henry, it's interesting getting back to uh, the action taken by the Singapore authorities. Is it surprising that Singapore needed to impose these property cooling measures in the first place, given uh, a higher rates environment, which arguably ought to be doing that job uh, for them? And do you think that this policy will be successful in shaking out uh, the foreign speculative uh, buyers in the residential market and uh, making property more affordable for Singaporeans? I think if you look at the two dynamics, I think for end users, the Singaporeans, I think that mass market is likely to remain resilient and stable. We are not expecting to see the price going to drop for that uh, the big segment. But for luxury residential speculative investments, it's definitely going to have a profound impact. When we were talking to so many private investors, institutional investors, they have already talking about wait and see approaches when the stamp duty was 30%. So now it's increasing to 60%. So those type of investors say, we're probably going to wait further to see any uh, price corrections. 